Uh, is Martin Grunberg, who is the Vice Chair of the Board of Directors of the FDIC. Grunberg. Thank you, Chairman Frank, Chairwoman Velasquez, Ranking Member Bacchus, Ranking Member Graves, and members of the committee. I appreciate the opportunity to testify on behalf of the FDIC on the state of lending and credit availability for small business and commercial real estate. Adverse credit conditions and stressed balance sheets have created a difficult environment for borrowers and lenders. Large banks have significantly cut back on lines of credit to consumers and to small business. In addition, small and mid-sized institutions who tend to make business loans secured by residential and commercial real estate are dealing with the effects of large declines in real estate values which tend to reduce the collateral coverage of existing loans and make it more difficult for household and small business borrowers to qualify for new credit. In response to these challenging economic circumstances, banks are clearly taking more care in evaluating applications for credit. While this more conservative approach to underwriting may mean that some borrowers who received credit in past years will have more difficulty receiving credit going forward, it should not mean that creditworthy borrowers are denied loans. As bank supervisors, we have a responsibility to encourage institutions regularly and clearly to continue to make soundly structured and underwritten loans. Acknowledging this responsibility, the FDIC and the other bank regulators supplemented prior guidance and issued the interagency statement on meeting the credit needs of creditworthy small business borrowers earlier this month to emphasize that examiners follow a balanced approach in assessing small business lending. The statement recognizes that many small businesses are experiencing difficulty in obtaining and renewing credit to support their operations. It is clear that for a number of reasons, that small business credit availability has tightened. The FDIC and the other bank regulators believe that continued sound lending to credit worthy borrowers is critical to the long term success and health of the small business sector and their lenders. The statement indicates that financial in institutions should understand the long term viability of a borrower's business and focus on the strength of a borrower's business plan to manage risk rather than using portfolio management models that rely primarily on general inputs such as borrowers' geographic location or industry. This new guidance states that examiners will not adversely classify loans solely on the basis of a decline in the collateral value below the loan balance or the borrower's association with a particularly stressed industry or geographic region. I would note that the FDIC has also reached out to the industry to help us frame policies and supervisory procedures that will help lenders navigate through this credit cycle and become more comfortable extending and renewing loans. One of the first steps in this process was to establish the FDIC's Advisory Committee on Community Banking in mid-2009 to better enable our board and senior management to have a dialogue with the industry on how we can improve our supervisory programs and foster improved availability of credit. The advisory committee met most recently on January 28th, where we discussed many of the issues we are discussing today in this testimony, including credit availability and access to capital markets. The advisory committee will continue to meet regularly and provide direct input from community bankers on the many critical issues they face. Over the past year, through guidance, the examination process, and other methods, the FDIC has sought to encourage banks to maintain the availability of credit while striving to balance these considerations with prudential safety and soundness requirements. Striking the appropriate balance remains our greatest challenge. Thank you very much.